Yeah, I do have a, a Ooh, few. I do. He's got a lot. Trust me. New York, yeah. Eric. Yeah. All right. So, I, uh, which which one comes to mind when I say that? Like the one that pop just pops right in. All right. Okay. One that pops in is uh, from ESPN Trick Shot Magic. Okay. This was hilarious. I, I, I wouldn't say I actually embarrassed myself, but uh, I did have some of the uh, sponsors turning around and looking at me, and who is this guy? But anyway, uh, the story goes. Okay. Mike Massey and Tom Dr. Q. Rossman are competing in the finals. All right. For ESPN Trick Shot Magic. This, and this is on ESPN? This is on ESPN. Okay. Anyway. Uh, and you're in the audience at this I, point. I'm, I'm in assuming the audience. You, I'm assuming you participated. Oh, uh, no, no. Okay. No, no. no okay. It's just straight up the two of them playing and fighting it out. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this is on the finals. So anyway. I, I'm up in the bleachers right, there, great. and uh, it's kind of funny. Pool of billiards took a photograph. Okay. Okay. Of uh, Tom Rossman on the left side, Mike Massey on the right side, and Massey wound up beating him. Okay. okay. But anyway, when they took the picture, I'm in a Hawaiian shirt. It was Pool and Billiards magazine, okay, on the front cover. Okay. All right. And I'm right in between these two up in the audience. They caught me perfect. So it was a perfect shot. Yeah. Massey, me, and Rossman. <laughs> it was hilarious. But anyway. Which was the battle back in the day. Well, yeah. Yeah? yeah. I mean, because yeah. you, just, you just told us that the 2001 yeah. Continental, it, was a, it really basically came down to the three of you. Yeah, well, uh, actually, I won two. Uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't finish that, by the way. I yes. won two of the eight disciplines that, that year in that Continental Qualifier, and I go up to receive my two medals. And Steve Lillis, who was the tournament director at that time, Rossman was giving out the medals. And Lillis says, oh, by the way, we have Sarge coming up next, and uh, we're going to give him both medals. And Sarge kind of put on a clinic today. Table two. Uh, is there a link or something? Like sure. Sure. So... Um, are you on Facebook? Yeah. It's the easiest way to do it. So pull up Facebook. Yeah. And okay. I'm Eric Kinzer. Let me hear. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll have having to throw in. Oh, oh, shoot. Sorry. I've been doing this quite a bit, uh, promoting my page. Absolutely. You got a great page. We might. We. we, we. So I think we're already. Um, yeah, we're already, I'm already friends with him, so I'm just. Um, I'm going to take about a three minute time out and I'll you, be right back. You want, yeah, go for it. Go right ahead and I get all this done and, and okay. then. Let me uh, take my mic off here. Sure. I'll see you in a few minutes, sir. I appreciate you. Come on back. I will. For 100%. Thank you. All right, so. Yeah, so we're, we're friends, right? You should just go to my Facebook page. What's your name, sir? Eric? Uh, Eric? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Are we friends? Let's see. Maybe not. I can't Add friend right there. There we go. All right, so, I, I, so we're friends now. So that's me, and then that's the link to the stream. Okay. And if she looks in the comments, if you're not on the stream, she can go here. And see what your live scoring is. That, yeah, I sure the tablets. Doing that, okay, so. I just need a copy of Facebook. So just, right just, here. I would just put a comment in with her name, and that should bring her right to it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys. So that's uh, Sarge, man. He's, he is a been around pool for, well, sixty seven. I think he said right. So, that's a long time. Great guy. Got great stories, and uh, we're gonna bring him back in here. Let's see what's going on with this match. All right, so we're at the, we're still on the first game. Uh, it is Adrian Vasquez's birthday today. He had turned fifty. Hey, Louisiana. Yeah, you got some roles. Um, yeah, you got it. He, he was playing seriously. He had a rough game right there. This is our former winner that just won the match earlier. That was you. I'm talking you. 
I'm talking, yeah, you're on live. I got you live. I got you live, Louisiana. All right, man, I'll tell you what, there's been some, some really weird roles today for some reason. Uh, but yeah, so it's Adrian's birthday day. He turned 50, officially, 5 0. Uh, I messed with him a little bit. He, uh, he used to have about, oh, maybe uh, a month ago, he had long hair and always wore his rock and roll. Oh, my God, this guy's going to get back to him. Uh, wore, always wore rock and roll t shirts like he was a rock and roll guy and uh, or, and music and uh, cut his hair off. So I kind of, oh, man, I tell you what, this might be a battle right here. See who can uh, get the rolls. Uh, but yes, I tease him a little bit because he cut off his hair and all of a sudden he cleaned up and he's, he's was, he was wearing you know, polo shirts and stuff. So I kind of messed with him last night. It was his birthday at midnight. And uh, so I, you know, I dress so many and he said, oh no, man, I'm wearing rock and roll more. So he's got Guns N' Roses shirt on and uh, hope I didn't jinx him because it looked like he lost his first match. I wasn't paying attention. He's been playing really well lately. Come on, baby, get in the pot. Oh. All right, so I think I'm going to move on from that. I don't want to give him the commentary curse. I don't want to jinx him. Uh. Oh, sorry, guys. I missed, I missed that. <laughs> At Jeff, not me. I'm streaming. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm just not crazy sitting over in the corner talking to myself. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. Table two. Uh, yeah, well, he's got to come back, Tony, and uh, talk some more. <laughs> uh, I've got more. I've got more interviews coming today. That's why I call. I, it's, it's pretty much my my stuff now on these lower level tournaments. are going to be a lot of just like a podcast type setup and interviews. Why we have the live streaming going on, so you get to see the action. You can watch the action and then try to give you a little bit of entertainment at the same time. Yep. So that's the game plan. Um. Well, I can tell you this: we got a 580, and that we have 525 and under in that area a lot here in Las Vegas. We have a big community of that level, so they they support it a lot. And so, looking going forward, there will be plenty of 525 and unders. Uh, So, yes, we will have more of them. I don't know if there's, there's any more set this year. I don't have an answer for you on that one. I'd have to look, check the schedule out. We do have, at the end of this month, we have the, uh, a 580 and under $1,000 entry fee, uh, 64 players, but it's, it is completely sold out. And that's uh, two weeks from now, two weekends from now. Um, and I'll be streaming it live. So I'll be bringing that to you. That's going to be, that, man, and I tell you what, and it's 580s from all over the country. So you want, people don't fly in that can't play well, right? They, if they're not good, for, yeah. The $500 entry fee, this is the, this was the first one we've done in a while with 500 entry fee. There are a couple of different production companies, people putting out product here in the, this area, which is from Arizona to Nevada, Las Vegas, and we're on the Southern Point. Uh, two different places you can check is uh, Mob Productions. They have plenty of higher level, low Fargo tournaments. So higher money, low Fargo tournaments from 500, 1,000, quite a few of them actually, even lower. Even the, They had one that was, uh, I believe it was like 490 and under, 500 entry fee and, and got 32 players. So yeah, so we have, we, we actually create a, we got, and then we have another company, another production, uh, Donkey, Donkey Beards or Donkey Pool, uh, Tim Daniels. Out of Arizona, he does the same thing. He has a lot of upper end Fargo rated tournaments that he produces, and he puts. He has a. a they both run a series of match tournaments that are uh, throughout the months, like monthly, if not if not bi monthly. 
So check on both of those guys. That's Mob Productions as well as Donkey Pool Productions, I believe it is. Tim Daniels and Jack Murray. So yeah, if you're looking for tournaments in the Las Vegas or in this this area of the country, these kind of entries, there's we have multiple. Like so, I know for sure that Mob Productions has a thousand dollar somewhere in the area of five eighty. He does a draw for the handicap, so it's never the same. But it's all within that area, um, at a thousand dollar entry fee, and that they everything sells out. So if you're going to get them, you got to get into their get onto their uh, Facebook page or group and then go from there uh go to las vegas pool players group on facebook and you can see 90 percent of all the tournaments here in town or in this part of the country actually yeah well we have 500 to a thousand dollar entry fees so you have a choice so adrian came back and tied this up one one this is a race to seven. So this was, is going to be the one loss side. It's nine on the winners. One loss is seven, race to seven. We have a total of 20 players. So that still puts the pot, the purse up in the $10,000 range, something like that. Uh, minus screen fees and tournament director fees. Oh, man, a little unlucky on that shot. Great shot, center pocket, just a little unlucky on the roll. Uh, it is a race of seven. He should be okay. He should be able to work through it. Yeah, you got it any time. And listen, you just got call. You just got entries into a certificate from Joe, or yeah, from a drawing for a certificate for twenty five dollars value from Joe's Q Repairs in Las Vegas. It's for a shaft cleaning. And uh, man, when he gets done with it, it's like brand new. He works on both carbon fiber and wood, so both very workable. Yeah, so if you're going to look for the tournaments, go to Las Vegas Pool Players Group. Here in, and uh, all that information is all over that page, all the tournaments here around this part of the country. And they play a lot. There's a lot of lower Fargo tournaments that pay a ridiculous amount of money. Um, if you know Marcus Graham, he can help you out with that also. He's all over the country running tournaments, doing a great job. I heard he's taking a little break here soon, but it is what it is. I uh, don't know what he was trying to do there. I do have um, Ronnie Wiseman coming in later. Listen, anybody in the Las Vegas area that wants to come in and, and uh, get on the stream, please come on down. I appreciate everybody. Got something to promote? Come on, bring it on down. Let's do it. Adrian just took a 2-1 lead. Let's give the birthday boy some support here today, and hopefully he can pull this one out. I'm sure he didn't like to start. He is a very consistent player, so oh. I expect a lot out of him. And I know he expected a lot of himself. He did already kind of hard last night. I'm just going to put that out there uh, between me, you, and the wall. So... Man, I tell you what, I've got Sarge's pull sticks right here. He carries, oh my God, it must be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 to 20 pull cues with him at all time. So, yeah, he's got a, man, what a, I don't know how he can even move that thing. It's heavy, very heavy. He is a dealer for... McDermott cues. So he carries a lot of the that he has for sale with him at all times.
trying to rearrange my area back here. We came loaded to bear. And I move my little table around here. All right, I'm back. Drago the Dragon is online now. See you later. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Tried to eat a piece of pizza. Mm. So maybe Adrian can use this match to get himself started. He's been doing really well lately and winning a lot of stuff. Nice little safety he just played. Joking. Guys, I appreciate all the help and support. We're trying to build a nice stream here. We still got some trying to buy equipment every day. Everything that I make and I bet you have I don't make anything off of it right now. It's going back into it. So if you could subscribe to Drift TV it would be great. It helps out this stream. Sarge is out making his rounds. Oh, you want to mic up? <laughs> So, on this system, this is pre, mm -hmm. and then once I get what I want here, like so I can change anything around over here I want to, and no one sees it. So let's say, say I want to put up blurred vision. So if Anthony comes in, I'll throw that in from like a little ad, and then I push this button here, and it goes. This is the live stream. This is what they're actually seeing right here. Yeah. Yeah, I got to meet a pizza pizza while they're playing. This is this is on the one the one lost side. <laughs> I was I was corrected. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get over it. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice hit right there. Adrian has got a combination. So he needs, when he makes this ball, the cue ball is going to be running behind the nine ball. Just need to make sure it comes back out from behind the nine. Should be okay. Or keep it inside the nine. That is the four ball at the top. Oh, what a shot that was. Nice and clean, right down the table. Uh, I guess he's got two shots. He can shoot the five ball back to the same pocket. Yep, that's what he's playing. The eight ball is off the table, so that's the five, six, seven, nine. This is the Adrian I 
used to watch him play. He's been playing really well lately. I swear I'm not going to say anything again. I swear, and then the, and then what happens? Boom. I got to quit doing that. No more, no more being nice to these guys. Curses them every time. Oh, that's a, that was a very nice clean shot. He got paid for it too. Oh my god, perfect position. Sarge, you coming back in? All right. I got a raider. All right, do what you got to do then. I got your, I got, I'm right, oh, okay. You ready? Uh, Yesterday, my, these, these wireless mics I just got lasted seven hours. So I was, like, I only paid like 30 bucks for them. So it worked out really nice. Here, let me start with that. Yep. That was quick. We're good. Good, good, good catch. Oh, <laughs> am I going to put it on you? Yeah. I'm not your wife, buddy. <laughs> got that shit right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I finally got to meet her. Uh, yeah. So I've, I've, done, I've talked to her on Facebook and stuff. I see. You didn't know that I was sneaking around on you and talking oh, to her. <laughs> no, she came up. She did a post about your um, YouTube, and I yeah. was like, man, so I had, to, I had to share it and, like, put it out there. And so... Absolutely. Yeah. She, uh, she obviously is very supportive. Uh, well, there's a reason <laughs> she's supportive. Okay. Is because she's a two-time Arizona State Ladies 8-Ball champion. Welcome to the freaking news, new, new waking of the eyes, my eyes. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. Are you guys anyway. I thought it changed. I didn't. I didn't no, so I the, score is, the score is 2-2. Two, two. It's no, right there. Whatever it, we hit. So look at this. Look at this tablet right here. No, I saw the tablet. I didn't know if you guys changed it or not, or he did. I didn't see it. He is. Oh, okay. Because you guys, you should be keeping your own scores. Yeah, no, I just, I, no okay. that's, that's you guys. That's not us. We don't touch that. It automatically comes to us. But, yeah, no, it's, that's you. Okay. Get people getting used to the tablet system. Oh, yeah. It's I, different. I just noticed something that I... Need to adjust. The names are a little small. Let's make them bigger so, so some of the older people can see them. <laughs> that, that was complete joke. That was a joke. That's funny. <laughs> and I got my reading glasses on here. You're hilarious. I got mine on too. Like, <laughs> don't take it personal. No, I'm, one, no. I'm one of those. <laughs> Now they say anywhere between forty-two uh, and forty-five, you need reading glasses. So, this is this is so I I've been nearsighted my whole life, yeah. and but I wear contacts now because I prefer yeah. contacts, especially when I'm shooting pool. Exactly. And but when I wear my contacts, I need reading glasses. But if I don't wear my contacts, then I need glasses for distance. Okay. So I can read without my contacts in. I'm still just near side, but because I put my contacts in, I no longer can read. I see. As as well, you put it that way. So yeah. So that's why I have to wear reading glasses. I see. Would you like a piece of pizza? Uh, I may try a piece. Yes. Well, it's right behind you. All right. There's no plate, so you got a day. Yeah, I I don't think I've uh, I've ever. Turn down a pizza I didn't want. Okay, well, if you, if you ever want to have a piece, you go for it. I had one already. I was, I was. <laughs> anyway, uh, getting back to my wife. Yes. Not only was she a two-time Arizona State Ladies Eight Ball champion. Okay. She, uh, in 1986, went down to the Nationals in uh, Fort Worth, Dallas area. In, in, in which in Nationals BCA, was it? Okay, BCA Nationals. America, sure. Which? One. What year was that? 86. So that's, that state. was the Nationals, and there was nothing else. That's Let's right. be honest about it. That was the lead. Yeah. So uh, she goes down because she wound up winning the 85 uh, 
Arizona State Eight Ball sure. Championship. She's going for a national championship. Yep. So sure. anyway, she goes down. And out of 687 women, which they divided into 24 brackets, okay, okay she uh, she won her bracket. You had to win the bracket to go to the so that's 24. final 24, sure. Yeah. So anyway, she won her bracket and she beat everybody 4-0. Woo! Except one person got one game. Okay. But they didn't win the game. My wife the took the eight ball in the wrong pocket. No, oh, so really? That's how they got a win. Okay. Okay, a W. Right? Yes. So anyway, the newspaper came in and did an article. I'm my wife. I want to know where this person came from that was accomplishing this instead of doing an article on Robin Bell. So let me let now me Robin Bell let me it. add just a little content to the newer guys. So yes. the BCA, which is the BCA league now, back in the day. All the pros played in these tournaments. This was not a. This was not like a lower Fargo rated tournament. Right. This was the right. best of the best came to the BCA. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, no matter where it was, the, I mean, yeah. Buddy Hall, Effort. I mean, like everybody, the best of the best yeah. came to this tournament. Well, well, yeah, but but uh, uh, I think there was a cutoff. You couldn't be in the top sixteen in the world. In the world, okay. I know. And, and I knew about the BCA. I think that's what it was. I, the, the BCA I went to, it, but I think that's what it was. So the BCA I went to, which is was in Tampa, uh, he Buddy might not have been in the tournament, but he was in the gambling room because there was oh, a yeah. gambling room back yeah, then. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, hot and heavy him, room. Yeah, him and his road partner. <laughs> yes, him and his road partner. So I just wanted to put a little content that the tournament wasn't as I don't want to say as easy as it is now. But it was a, it was yeah. to win that you won something. Yeah. It wasn't like just it was like a real, exactly, top level player tournament. There was a lot of good players in it. But anyway, uh, yeah. she took and uh, she took and drew, of course, Robin Bell the first match. No, it's really now great. she had a draw on Robin Bell the first match. I know the wife would have been uh, way up there. So I so she finished tied nineteen. So was was that was it single elimination once it got to the full twenty four? So that's why she only played Robin Bell, and Robin Bell got her. Yep. Ah, uh, which yep. Robin Bell was one of the top players in the world at the time for the women. Yeah. Well, four years later, she wins the uh, W uh, 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 W uh, P A World Pool PBA? Association uh, nine ball world title, and okay. then backed it up in ninety one, and did it again, and did it again. So yeah. I would say she's which, probably playing pretty good at 86. Which <laughs> uh, I, I'm pretty sure that Robin Bell is also Robin Dotson now. Yes. So let's not mess, make sure that we're talking about this. Everybody understands right. it because yeah. you would know her as Robin yeah. Dotson Roy, now. Roy Dotson and her got married. Correct. And, uh, yeah, they've been together for quite some time now. Uh, so I'm so my first jump crew yeah. was a... Frogger, I had a Frogger and a Tadpole, which was the two different links she that she brought out. Like. Absolutely. Now the frog. This is something uh, that was quite amazing. I'm out in 1992. Okay. And the guy that developed the frog was a guy by the name of Phil. You used to go into hard times. Now, are you talking the? Because hers was the Frogger. No, this is a frog. different one. The frog. No, the frog is what came out. Because back, I know back then a lot of people just used their shafts and they made it illegal to use your shaft. Right, it must be 40 inches. And now the frog was 40 inches. So he added that little butt. So he's the one that came with that little butt? The well, frog, huh? Yeah, after they changed the rule, they had to yes. 40 inches. So yes. Yes. Anyway, uh, I have an original frog. Oh, you do? And it was signed by her, Robin Bell. Right. The new ones, okay, that after she got married, yeah, that came out says Robin Dotson. Okay, I don't know if you knew that. I did a not. A little bit of trivia for you. I'm trying to. I don't. I have. I have about. I gave away a couple of them, like to my brother and stuff. So <laughs> I don't know how many. I got at least two at the house. Really? And I don't. Yes. Wow. And That's the and cool. and I got and I, and one of them has the brass ferrule. Like when I first right. got there, were there was the brass ferrule, exactly. and then there, there was the Phenolic. So I, I have, I think I have one of each, ah, and I don't know what names on them. 
Okay, well, check it out. Yeah. So her sticks were uh, the Frogger or the Frog? I thought it was the Frogger. No, it's the Frog. The Frog and the Tadpole? Yep. Okay. All right. I thought it was Frogger. I don't know why in my mind it was the Frogger. That's why I thought it was the just Frogger. Frogger was a game you played on Atari, I think it was. I no, you I did Frog Cross Street before you got squashed. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was so it good. was so it was the, the frog, frog and the tadpole, because yes. the tadpole was the smaller one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have a couple at the house, and matter of fact, I got them for her at Q Club. Uh, she was she had come in there, and it was like July, okay. and she kept her stuff up in the attic at Q Club, and it was. 110 degrees and even hotter inside that attic and me and my buddy john capano were there and john's a small guy and so she asked us to help her get some stuff down from there so john being a little guy climbed up in there and she'd be passing them down to me and we, so she gave us froggers or frogs and she actually gave him a nice shooting cue also that she had put out oh, so yes yeah, nice. great very nice i love yeah she's great greatest person not very nice person Oh, well, uh, here's another little bit of uh, trivia. Okay. Uh, Robin Bell and Jan McWhorter were at my and my wife's wedding. Oh, really? Yes. And what year was that? That was 1999, September 4th. We got married, and we got married up in uh, uh, Prescott. Okay. Uh, up on the hill where the uh, casino is, at the Indio Casino. In Arizona. In Arizona. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, those those were the two ladies that came to uh, our the wedding. wedding, and uh, we had a nice reception inside, and uh, we had about thirty-five of the women uh, because the WPBA nine ball event was going on there, and uh, so about thirty-five of the women uh, came to uh, our wedding reception. Fantastic! Yeah, yeah, we had, we had a great time. Uh, my wife and I. We gave the uh, trick shot exhibition for the uh, charity event that Thursday. Sure. And uh, actually, Jeanette Lee came up behind my wife when she was shooting a shot. She says, can I have that shot? Oh. Yeah. And my wife, my wife turned around and says, oh, hi, Jeanette. Says, can I have that shot? She says, uh, my wife says, yeah, if I make it. And she yells <laughs> it. <laughs> anyway, hilarious. When the ESPN did the women's. Uh, trick shot uh, challenge. Sure. Jeanette used that shot. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> the make... shot? I saw that. So that was the shot, your wife's shot. My wife's shot, yep. Okay. Yeah, you're trapped, two balls trapped, and she makes the eight ball over in the pocket in good shape on the nine to run out. Okay. Yeah. And with, with respect from, uh, from Jeanette. Jeanette, she asked your wife, do you mind if I use that shot? And yeah, then yeah, ESPN came shot. around, and now she's... She <laughs> okay. That's so, a great shot. so our match right now is Adrian's up two, four to two. It looks like um, uh, Jason's son came online, Reagan Ford. Ah. Um, what where is Jason from? Why are you gonna ask me a tough question like that? I am so sorry. I Who don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, he might be. I don't know. He might be part of the Arizona group. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't, I'm not I, familiar I, I, with I might, the name, you know, so. I might be able to, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not either. These are, the, yeah. Uh, go to channel. He's got, son's got a channel. Let's see if we can find it. Nope, there's, he's got nothing on it. Okay. Hey, guys, please subscribe to, to the uh, Griff's TV. We appreciate it. Oh, I, I almost said that, Reagan. I almost said it could be daughter, daughter or son. It's his daughter. I apologize. <laughs> I, I, when I first read it, I was thinking daughter, and I was like, "Well, maybe it's maybe it's the the, the son." Reagan could be either one, but yes, I'm sorry. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And by the way, you just got two entries into the to the drawing for a twenty five dollar gift certificate here in Las Vegas. And uh, where are you guys from, Reagan? Uh, did, did, we, did I lose the stream? I don't know. Let me look here. I don't know why I would. Let's see. No, we're still live. I think. 
Yeah, no, we're still good. We're still the live. The stream is still good. So if you lost it, um, you can. Well, he's on there, so obviously, it wasn't. um. Okay, so they're from Arizona. That's what I. It, 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 we have such a big group of Arizona people. I almost guessed it. Okay, so there's there's about eight. There's we only have a total of twenty players in this five hundred dollar entry fee tournament, and eight of them came in from Arizona. Yeah. So he's part of the Arizona group. Yeah. Buckeye, Arizona, by the Buckeye. way. Oh yeah, hey, man. They're everybody's jumping in now. My son lives. Uh... Oh okay. Oh, I'm sorry. He's from Phoenix. He's Phoenix, okay. Oh, she used to play. She used to play at Bull Shooters in Arizona, in Phoenix. Really? Yeah, with her dad. Cool. Sure enough. Cool. <laughs> so what you got for us? What more you got for us? It's now four three, by the way. Yes. Her dad's starting to show up. He's like sneaking oh, back in. My daughter, <laughs> my daughter's on there. I got to show her that you know I'm not going down easy. That's right. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the lady that played uh, Paul McCarthy. Sure. Yeah. Today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, I just didn't know that match happened, but I, and who won? Yeah, she did. And listen, Paul's been winning things lately, dude. He won that. He, that the, I part know, of the mob, the major. The, the mob productions put on, like, I, I don't know. know, it was either $500 or $1,000 entry fee tournament, and he won it. He won it. That like, was a big, big payday. Mo big money. Oh, big my. payday. You never Paul. saw that. You just saw, saw that back in the day. Heck no. Between mob, me, me mom and, and, and Marcus Graham, yeah. there's two tournaments being put on here in Las Vegas area that $1,000 entry fees that are under, like 580 and under, or somewhere in that area, yeah. with 64 players that's paying out 30 grand or 40 grand for first place. And I think total with everything is like 50. You can make 100 grand if you win two tournaments a year here in Las Vegas. That's, under 580 Fargo's. Like even the upper level players don't have that kind of money to play with that they're being playing matches like that because you can't get enough of them to show up. Right. But man, the five eighty that that area play yeah. all over the country is huge because they're flying it everywhere for these tournaments. Yeah, Bert and Sophia. Okay. That came up. Okay. Bert, I've known for oh dear lord, eighties. Wait, what? I knew Bert in the eighties. Is this the young? This is the young lady that beat. Paul. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good win too at this level. Yeah, yeah Bert and I have played a ton of pool together, and we used to play scotch doubles. Two of them as well, Charlie oh. and me. Oh, really? Yeah. And then the and then the BCA league says you two can't play anymore together. <laughs> what year was so, that? That was uh, that was in the nineties. Yeah, because they they're they're pretty good now about their. Yeah. Yeah, but the... You just have to be in the inside of a certain Fargo rating nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if they didn't have Fargo, you yes. just rated, you know, anywhere. A, B, like C. A, a 4 to a 10. Or oh, okay. Or Phoenix it went uh, 4, 5 to 10 minus 2. Yes. You so, I played many a tournaments like that. 10 minus 1, uh, 10. When I ran tournaments back in Florida, I just kept it simple, though. I did an A tournament and a B tournament. And, and seriously, the A tournament was an A tournament. And my D B tournament, I was very strict on. So it was more probably like a C plus B minus. Because I mean, I didn't I, like the guys that were close to upper a. level B. Yeah. They played A. I don't, I don't yeah. play. I don't play around. Right. Like I'm sorry, you right. played. Too. And but they didn't mind because back then, man, you wanted to play against the best. It's oh, yeah, the only way you're going to get better. Yeah, yeah. The other thing uh, people uh, forget is uh, they say, "Oh, I'm going to go practice, throw balls out on the table, and start shooting balls." Or yeah. Uh, why do you want to do something you already know you can do? What you need to do okay. is you need to practice your weaknesses. So that's exactly what I was about to say. Is that your weaknesses if, if I'm throwing if practice. I'm throwing balls out on the table and hitting balls, yeah. because I'm either working on stroke, I'm working on table speed and or position. Yeah. That's simply that's all that's for is because I want to just I just want to I want those different angles. And then I'll do the same shot over. I'll do the same exact shot 50 times trying to get that position that I want. I mean, I'll work on the same exact time 50 times in a row. Just one shot. It's like 
But that's how I was taught. We're on one shot and then move on. Well, I was at a tournament one time. And uh, <laughs> what was a tournament I was at, or I heard it after the tournament. Anyway, okay. uh, the legendary Lou Sheegan, Lou Terra. Okay. okay, sure. Uh, who used to have this place here back in the day? Pool Sharks? Yeah, Pool okay. Sharks. Okay, sure. Anyway, uh, Lou knew my mentor very well. They used to play straight pool together a lot. All right. Uh, so anyway... Uh, a guy came up to Lou and he says, excuse me, Lou, he says, I have this little bit of a tough shot and I want to ask you, you know, you, you know, how, how to make it. Right. So he set the shot up. It, it was a pretty difficult tight shot. You know, okay. it was makeable, but you know, the percentages are not going to be good unless you're, you know, a top, top, top player. Okay? Sure. So anyway, Lou Batera looked at the guy and he says, uh, he says, uh, have you ever shot that shot 500 times? He says, no. He says, well, if you had a shot 500 times, you would have you done You don't have to, You were doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, So is that, is that what now? That if you had he shot said, it 500 times? If you had a shot 500 times, you would have known. What you did wrong. What you did wrong and how to make the shot. Because you would have figured it out. Exactly. And the kid looked at him like... <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? You mean you're not going to help me? <laughs> Dude, you, it was but, hard getting help out of good players back in the day. They didn't, they, oh, they didn't give up. No, they did not good. want you to get as good as them. You like you're going to get to me. I'm, you're going to have to do this on your own, like I did. I'm telling you, when I met Dave D. Pasquale in Lompoc, California, yes, Lompoc, California, yes, by Vandenberg Air Force, Base, very lucky. He took me under his wing because he saw my passion for the game. Number one. And I didn't have any bad habits to lose because I played maybe three, four times. In right, my there was nothing life. there. Yet. I had nothing, no bad habits. <laughs> and, so, and I hundred percent, I bet you were open to anything and everything he was saying. Of course, yeah. I didn't know crap. Yeah. <laughs> well, I basically knew how to chalk the red in the queue. <laughs> but you know, I mean, the day he started showing me the basics, and I started pocketing some balls. I'm hooked, baby. Hook line. It, it is definitely a game that will suck you in in a heartbeat because, oh, yeah. and especially if you're very competitive. Oh yeah. Oh my god, it is a because I've always been competitive my whole life. Grew up, oh, yeah. I grew up in a big family. Yeah. You have to be competitive. Oh, yeah. I mean, and so yeah. it fueled my competitiveness for sure. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I love the game. I hate to say this, but I love the game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate uh, to say it. I, I took him, uh, he told me, he says, I'm only going to teach you one game. Okay. He said, if you can play this game well, you can play any other game. And he introduced me to the game of straight pool, 14.1. 14.1. So he says, if you can play this game well, you can play any of the other games. He said, once you run 50, you're becoming a player. Once you run 75, now you're kind of graduated. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask you the question. But now, but now. If you run over 100, you're a real player. Okay, so you know what the next question is. Yeah, if I run over 100. How, how many, what is your top <laughs> number? Because everybody always knows what their top number is to beat because you're, you're, once again, fueling that competitiveness. Exactly. you got to compete against yourself. So if you did 50, you need to get to 60. If you did 60, you need to get to 70. Yeah. Highest number, let's hear it. Highest number is only 107. Only 107. That's, you know, just a little. Well, I mean, it's about 150, but, you know. No, a hundred. My highest is thirty-two, <laughs> but I didn't play a lot of it. Yeah. But I'm not saying. Yeah, but I yeah, think I mean, I've got the thirty-two. Gotta you got a, you got a multiple. You know, I got multiple breaks in the rack and, and advance, which is which is the key. Yeah. Learning how to break open the balls. So there's two different styles that I've always been told and taught, and that is the style of where you just roll the cue ball into it and knock out a ball. And like finesse your shot from position to position or pile drive it. Right. You chip away the rack. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's old, old school. That is old school for okay. sure. Because I know that's, yes. Now, I like that style. Okay. And one of my mentors, Cliff Thayer. Okay. World renowned street pool player. Sure. Uh, he, uh, when he talked, I listened. Okay. He had two beautiful runs 449. 364. So when he talked, I listened. 
So what's the record right now? The record right now, okay, is uh, Jason Shaw runs 714. Ha, or, uh, John Schmidt, dear friend of mine. Mr. 300, 600. He runs 600, 626. Right? Yes. Okay, now, someone said they reviewed the tape on uh, Shaw. Okay. Someone said they took 100 balls away because he committed a little bit of a foul or something, moved the ball or something. And really, so, you know, I mean. So his numbers should have been. <laughs> no, so is that from what his record is, or is that it should have been 100 balls more? No. The 714 was what he ran. Okay. And they said they took 100 away. So 614. At, at 614. But, I mean, I, I mean, uh, it was armed. I don't know what the foul was, okay? I have no clue. So it was like an all okay. ball. It was an all ball foul. Yeah, type of but, situation. But, but I mean, in an exhibition, it's usually two ball room. Like yeah, okay? sure. In an exhibition. Uh, but, I mean, there have been people that have run so, so more than that. So, okay, so i got to ask you this one now, because okay. you brought up a thing here. So, uh, do you, who do you believe holds the record? Who do I believe holds yeah, the record? Yeah, who, uh, who, do, who do they, what does the pool community say holds the record? And what, your, what is your stance on that? How about that way? Is that better? Wow, okay. Well. <clears throat> the pool community says who holds the record. Okay. Pool community would say Jason Shaw holds the record. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. Who do I think holds the record from all time? Correct. <laughs> Neither one of them? Neither one. <laughs> That's I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> all right. Because I was told by numerous people okay. that Arthur Babe Cranfield okay. ran 768 balls. Okay. So, yes. Arthur Babe Cranfield was Syracuse, New York. I did a tribute exhibition and run. in 2012. Oh, this was in. This was. Him. Oh, this was lately. I was thinking, I thought he was no. from back in the day. He is back in the day. But he did it in 2012. No. Oh. I said in 2012, I gave a tribute exhibition. Oh. To the Hall of Famers. Sure. And he was one because I was born in Syracuse. Okay. Okay. Sure. So anyway, I did it at Premium Billiards that Frank Connors owned. Okay. And that was 2012. And we had like 80, 85 people there roughly. Anyway. The average age of the people that were there was 67 years old. <laughs> it's 14 one. <laughs> All the old guys so, came out and wanted to see who this young whippersnapper was. It was going to do a trick shot exhibition in honor of Cranfield. You. And that was me. And how old were you at the time? Uh, in 12. Uh, the, uh, oh, that's, is you a whippersnapper? <laughs> that, yeah. So to, uh, 10 years ago. 12, that's, uh, 11 years ago. But you're the 60. Ago. So 63. 63. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, close to where you're at. Yeah. All right. So anyway. 100%. I, uh, yeah, I went back and uh, I did a exhibition. Okay. Uh, for Irving Crane in Rochester. Sure. Okay. Big name. Uh, oh, huge. Yeah. I mean, this guy has world uh, championships won. Okay. Five world championships in four decades. Five. Five. World I, in four decades. I think right. he's won more than that, but So you say in four decades he's won in every decade. Yes. I mean that's basically what you're saying. Exactly. So that's 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 called a extended career oh, yes. at a very high level of pool. Yes, he was a Cadillac salesman. Cadillac salesman. Cadillac salesman. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I sold cars. No. Yeah. Cadillacs yeah. too, man. Woo. Back oh. in the day, man. Oh, Lou Grubb, Hyundai, Suzuki, and Saturn. Glendale, <laughs> 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 Arizona. Okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, after that. I can imagine you being a good car salesman, by the way. Oh. I was going to put that out there. I, I'm telling you. I'm going to put it out there. I'm telling you. We just got paid, you know, by. Commission. No, well, oh. it was commission, but it was so much per unit. Yeah, okay? sure. It wasn't like used cars. Right. You got a percentage of the of the sell uh, profit. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, 
after after my first two and a half, three weeks that I was there, the next four months I won sales for the month four times in a row. Yeah, yeah, they were looking at me for management. And I, I took in uh, after my motorcycle accident in '91, and uh, I had a pretty mean uh, manager, general manager, and. Uh, you said it so nicely. So uh, you said yeah, that very well, nicely. I mean, I could have thought of other other words to explain what you I, just said. I do have choice words. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to use them. You're doing a fine job. Yeah, I, I don't want my military language to come out. I'm trying to quit. Hey. <laughs> anyway, uh, I decided uh, that I, when I got my settlement, yeah, I knew it was coming real quick. I decided to uh, go back to pocket billiards. And that's and, and, and that's what took me out to California playing all the tournaments out there. And then I finally got my pro card in. Uh, and how old are you? So ninety four. Okay. Yeah. Which was the highlight? Which was a the, the early nineties like that. There was a lot of good pool being played oh, and a lot of champions. Was pool. I yes. Mean, pool, pool, pool. Not that there's not now. There's a lot of good pool oh, players yeah. now too, but there was a lot of old school pool hustlers that actually grind out yeah. the game. Yeah. Do they were still Nick having Garner, children? Buddy Hall. <laughs> Nick, yeah, this and of course Earl, Earl, in there. Earl, Mike Ma- Mike Siegel. Mike Siegel. Absolutely. Yeah. Johnny Archer was Johnny a player Archer. of the decade. Amazing. Yeah. I played Johnny in uh, 92 or 94. I can't remember. It was for the Southern California Nine Ball Championship. And uh, Tommy DiLorenzo actually came up and congratulated me on my play because the previous three people that Johnny played, he beat 9-1, 9-2, and 9-3. Yeah, just crushed him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, crushed him. Anyway, I went ahead and I went ahead and played him. And uh, he beat me 9-6. I had a chance. You had, you, yeah. <laughs> I had a chance. Okay. I, I mean, could have been, you know, been a hero. I could have been a hero. So... The, the, the match from the early 90s that I remember the most of all the matches I saw, and it might be just because he was shooting out of Orlando at the time, was when uh, Tommy Kennedy beat him in the, for the U.S. Open. Tommy Kennedy uh, yes. won the U.S. Open over Archer. I think it was 93, 92 or 93. I think 93. Yeah, I, I think you're real close, sir. Anyway, anyway. Tommy Kennedy is a very close personal friend. I refereed matches between I'll, Tommy I'm Kennedy. I'm going to stop you for one second. Yeah. So Adrian is on the nine ball to win this match. It is. Oh. He's on the hill, and this nine ball is for the match. It looks like he's cutting it. Oh, it's center pocket, too. That is a win. Happy very birthday! Nice. Birthday, boy! Birthday! Happy birthday! 